Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at inverses of functions, and we're going to be looking at four key points. So let's look at this first key point. The first key point is that if we ever switch the coordinates in a set of ordered pairs of a function, the resulting set of ordered pairs is called the inverse of the function. So for example, here we have a set of numbers, a set of coordinates, and we want to figure out what is the inverse for this particular function. So to do that, we just switch the order. We switch the x and the y's. So my first coordinate in my set would now be at negative 5, negative 3. And this would be at 0, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, and negative 5, 3. Oops. So this would be the inverse of the original function. Now it asks, is the inverse a function? Now to remember to figure out if the inverse is a function, or to figure out if anything's a function, you're looking to see that each x is paired up with one y. Or another way to look at it is, are there any repeats with the x's? We don't care about the y's, we just care about the x's. So when I look at this, I can see that there's a number of repeats. So I can see that the three repeats, because three is paired up with negative one, and three is also paired up with a positive one. Zero is paired up with negative two, and zero is also paired up with a positive two. Negative five is paired up with a negative three, and it's also paired up with a positive three. So here you have a number of x's that are paired, that are paired up with different values for y. So this is not a function. Now, the original was a function because if you looked at the original, not only is it described as a function, but we can also look at the x values, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. They're all different values for x, so that would be a function. So that's your first key point. So the first key point is to figure out whether or not it's a uh, function, or to figure out if, uh, or to find the inverse of a set of points. We switch the x and y's, and that will give us the inverse for those coordinates. Now, we could also find the inverse for an actual equation. That's what this next key point says. If the original function is described by an equation, then switching the variables, switching the x and the y in the equation, give an equation its inverse. So if I want to find the inverse for this equation, I'm going to start by switching the x and the y. So technically, this is my inverse. But when we find the inverse, if we ever had to graph this equation, I can't graph it the way it is. If I just plug it in my calculator, it's, it's not going to give me an answer. So I want to get the y by itself. So this is going to require us to do some algebra. So I know it's really, uh, you, you want to get rid of the root. And so you're thinking, well, if I square both sides, I'll get rid of the root. We have to wait. You have to hold off on that. So you don't want to take and do anything with the root until we get the root all by itself. So I'm going to start by adding 6 to both sides. And then I want to divide both sides by 4 because my goal is to get the root by itself. So now I have x plus 6 divided by 4 equals the square root of y plus 2. Now we've held off long enough. So now we can take and square each side because if I square each side, it will undo the root. So I'm just going to write this over here. So instead, it's going to be y plus 2 equals, I'm going to leave this for right now as x plus 6 divided by 4, that whole fraction being squared. And so now we want to get the y by itself, so I subtract 2 from both sides. So I have x plus 6 divided by 4, quantity squared, and then we subtract 2. So this is the inverse of our original function. Let's try another one together. This one's a little bit trickier. So here we have f of x, or y equals 1 divided by x minus 3 plus 4. So again, we want to switch the x and the y around to find the inverse. So it's going to be x equals 1 divided by 1, y minus 3, that fraction, plus 4. So then we want to figure out, or we want to solve this equation for y. Now this one again, it's tricky. You want to get the fraction by itself this time. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And when I do that, I get x minus 4 equals 1 divided by y minus 3. Now with this fraction, you want to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by what's in the denominator. In the denominator, we have y minus 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y minus 3. Because doing so gets rid of the fraction on the right, so we're left with not 0 on the right, we're left with 1 on the right. 
So now I have y minus 3 times x minus 4 equals 1. But again, our goal is to get the y by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 4. So when I divide both sides by x minus 4, these x minus 4s cancel out. So now I have y minus 3 equals 1 divided by x minus 4. Add 3 to both sides, and we get our answer. We get y equals 1 over x minus 4 plus 3. That would be the inverse of y equals 1 divided by x minus 3 plus 4. So these are inverses of each other. So just to review so far, to find the inverse, if we have a set of coordinates, we switch the x and y values in our coordinates around. To find the inverse when we're given an equation, we switch the x and y variables around. Now let's look at the next key point, which is this. That the graphs of a function and its inverse are reflection images of each other over the line y equals x. Now y equals x is this line here. And let's actually look at this example. This example here, we know that, or this illustration, we know that the vertex is up here at 0, 4. Well, if you switch the 0 and the 4, you get 4, 0, which would be here. So now your vertex has been reflected over that line, y equals x, to be at 4, 0. We know this point here would be at negative 2, uh, 0. And negative 2, 0, if you switch that, it's now going to be at 0, negative 2. It should be right here. And then if we took this point for our other x-intercept for the blue graph, which would be the point 2, 0, well, 2, 0, when you switch the x and the y, you get 0, 2, which if you notice is reflected over the line y equals x as well. So with those three points, then you could make your parabola to look like that. And again, you can see that that line is reflected over the line y equals x. So all inverses are reflected over that line, which comes in handy because sometimes you're going to be asked to sketch a graph of a particular function. So let's look at this first one. This first one, if I put in the line y equals x, and they want to make sure your line, whoops, y equals x is pretty precise. And here's how you can do that. Y equals x means that whatever x is, y is going to be the same value. So when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 3, y is 3. When x is 4, y is 4. Or negative 1, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 2, and so on. So that's going to be a line y equals x. So now that little arch is, or arc is going to be reflected over that line y equals x. But to get a better idea of where it's going to be, we can use that first uh, key point and figure out what these coordinates of um, these points are in this graph. So the first point there is at negative 3, 0, and the second point is at 0, 3. So if I reflect that, if I want to find the inverse, I would switch the x and the y. So this would be 0, negative 3. This would be 3, 0. So those points get reflected over the line y equals x. They become these two. And then we would just connect those with a little arc and as best we can to show that it's reflected a reflection image of our original uh, function there. So why don't you guys try the same thing now with this next graph. Something to point out though, this is an open circle and this is a closed circle. So go ahead and see if you can't graph the um, inverse of this other function. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay. So what you should have done is you should have had a graph looking something like this. Again, this point here, this open circle, is at 0, negative 1. If you switch those two, you get negative 1, 0. So we'd have an open circle, and it'd be going down and to the left to get a reflection over that line, y equals x. This point here is at 0, negative 2. Our closed circle is at 0, negative 2. Switch those coordinates, you get negative 2, 0. So we have a closed circle there, and it's going to go up and to the right. So that would be your graph for your inverse function. So again, all inverses of the original function are reflections over the line y equals x. And the last key point is what we call the inverse of functions theorem. The inverses of, inverse of functions theorem tells us that if f following g of x, so if we find the composition of f following g of x, and that gives us, when we simplify it, that gives us an answer of x, and g following f of x, that composition of those two functions also equal x, 
then the functions are going to be inverses of each other. So we can use that rule to determine whether or not two functions are inverses. So that's what we're doing in part A. It says use the inverse of functions theorem to determine whether f and g defined by that these two functions are inverses. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start out by taking and finding what f following g of x would be. So I'm going to put function g, that expression, in for function x and function f. So it's going to be instead of 2 divided by x, it's going to be 2 divided by this equation, 2 divided by x plus 5. And then minus 5. So I replace x with this fraction. Now this looks really ugly right now. So I want to simplify it. So to simplify, when we have a fraction inside of a larger fraction, we take the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal of 2 divided by x plus 5 is x plus 5 over 2. And we multiply that in the numerator and the denominator. So the result is that the denominator, the 2's cancel out and the x plus 5's cancel out, so the denominator cancels out, so that's what we were hoping for. And in the numerator, the 2 and this 2 would cancel each other out, leaving us with x plus 5 in the numerator, but then we have that minus 5 on the end. And 5 minus 5 is obviously 0, so we're left with just x. So f following g of x ended up equaling x after all. Now we're going to do the same process. This time we're going to switch it around. This time I'm going to take function f and put it inside of function g. So we're going to take and replace that x with 2 divided by x minus 5. Okay, well I can see here that negative 5 plus 5 is 0, so I'm not left now with 2 divided by 2 divided by x. Well again, just like the last one, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x divided by 2. So these x's cancel out, these 2's cancel out. And in the numerator, this 2 and this 2 cancels out, leaving us with just x. So that's your answer. So the fact that g following f of x gave us x and f following g of x gave us x tells us that these two are inverses of each other. Now we can verify that by graphing our two original functions. We'll be able to see that they're reflections over the line. y equals x. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. Uh, because that would just be a matter of plugging it into your calculator. So you can do that if you'd like. But otherwise, this ends this particular lesson. So again, a lot of this is review from Advanced Algebra, so you should already know each of these key points. Um, but again, make sure you're familiar with all of those points because you're going to need to know how to do this for the uh, assignment. So with that, good luck.